Hello there. Welcome to Legal Talk. My name is James Paniki. I'm a senior editor with the Asia Bureau of MLEX here at LexisNexis, and I'm speaking to you from our offices in Melbourne. It's great to be with you. And for those still unfamiliar with who we are and what we do, MLEX is a LexisNexis media company. We produce independent journalism that covers regulatory affairs in certain policy areas, depending on which jurisdiction you're in. Here in Australia, our focus is on competition law and data privacy and security and the regulation thereof, with a small smattering of anti-bribery and corruption as well. And it's always fun for us to pop in on the Legal Talk podcast to give you an update of what we're covering at the moment. And today, let me put a question to you. Were you among the millions of Australians affected by recent high-profile data breaches? Even if you weren't, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Optus, Medibank Private and Latitude Financial are the companies affected, and with them, of course, their clients who have had their personal data stolen. What's of interest to us and to our subscribers both here in Australia and internationally has been the policy settings. Australia's Ageing Privacy Act is now up for review and tough new penalties for data breaches have recently been introduced. But there has also been a flurry of class action lawsuits in the wake of the cyber attacks. These are a relatively new response to data breaches, at least here in Australia. MLEX's Sydney-based senior reporter Laurel Henning has been following developments and she wrote a great piece of analysis on this very issue for the MLEX website. And she's with us now from the LexisNexis offices in Chatswood. Now, Laurel, first of all, what are we up to with these lawsuits? What is going on? Well, there's quite a shopping list to go through, James. We've got two class actions against Medibank Private before the Federal Court of Australia. One complaint to the OAIC, the Office of the Australian Information Commissioner, against Medibank Private as well, which could also lead to compensation for consumers. And then we've got another another class action, this time involving shareholders, and that's before the Supreme Court of Victoria. All four of those involve the health insurer Medibank Private. Then against Optus, there's a class action before the Federal Court of Australia, Uh, Involving Latitude Financial, the third sort of major data breach in the last six months, we're yet to see a class action, but two Australian law firms, Gordon Legal and Hayden Stevens and Associates, have both announced that they're working together on a class action for those affected. So that's your whistle-stop tour of class actions to do with data breaches at the moment. Yes, indeed. Clearly a flurry of activity there, and that in itself is, is newsworthy, right, because we're talking about privacy or privacy-based class action lawsuits. But why are these lawsuits different to others that we might have seen before? Yeah, we're really in unknown territory here, James. We're breaking new ground. There have never before been uh, class actions in Australia linked to cyber attacks. So no one has ever had to prove to a court, to a judge, what that loss or damage is, that, that crucial phrase, on behalf of claimants to a federal court. And that's different to a shareholder class action, where you can see... Let's say, for instance, an argument of the share price has dropped and you could argue, well, but for how the company handled this, but for how they communicated the shortcomings in their system, allegedly, perhaps I'm going to say that they didn't. I'm going to argue that in my court case, in my claim, I might have made a different investment choice if I had had that information if they had handled it differently. And now I'm seeing that share price drop. I'm seeing my investments dwindle before my very eyes. When we're talking about data privacy, health insurance details, that's a different kind of loss or damage. Unless you could show, for instance, that you had to move house because of this data breach, that you lost your job because of the the details that were now out there that relate to you. That's very different. Okay, so the establishment of loss or damage, from what you're telling me, is uh, in a way the deciding factor for the success of these cases, right? Absolutely right. That's correct. If these early cases against Optus, against Medibank are successful, we could see many more follow in their wake. But if they fail to establish that idea of loss or damage, that could make these cases unpalatable, to use a phrase 
of Melissa Gladstone, a partner at Herbert Smith Freehills, who I spoke with recently about these cases. Another factor we should consider here are the planned updates to Australia's Privacy Act, of course, that ongoing Privacy Act review that's been underway since 2020. At the moment, one proposal on the table is the introduction of a statutory tort for individuals relating to data breaches. When you and I, James, were speaking recently with lawyers in Melbourne, that point came up a lot. And and lawyers we spoke with said that this measure, if it stays in the updated Privacy Act, would probably lead to a spike or an explosion in class actions and lawsuits. Yeah, so clearly the Privacy Act and the review of the Privacy Act is in the background of all of this and it's casting a shadow over all of these discussions, all of these lawsuits. But where do we go from here, Laurel? I mean, what's next in these existing class actions? Well, the Optus and Medibank class actions are are both listed, or all listed, I should say, because there's technically more than two, uh, to return before Justice Jonathan Beach of the Federal Court of Australia on the 1st of August. That's going to be a very important day if it goes ahead on that day, of course. These things are often tending to change. But for the Medibank cases, this is going to be a particularly important date because at the last hearing, Justice Beach said that lawyers for both class actions in uh, relating to Medibank Private had to go away and discuss potential consolidation in those cases and put the second case, at that point he put the second case uh, that had reached the federal court sort of in terms of timing, he put that case on hold. So his point at that moment was, why should I hear two separate cases that focus on a single event? So those lawyers now have until August to negotiate on that potential consolidation. If they fail to agree, then there'll be a hearing before the court on contested multiplicity. Now, where plaintiffs object to consolidation, one solution could be to keep separate case numbers that are listed on the same docket. So it's an effective merging of the cases in all but name, kind of keeps everyone happy, a a compromise that can keep everyone happy. The challenges over competing lawsuits in Australia perhaps exacerbated here by a lack of US style race to certification before a case can begin as well as the absence of any sort of deadline. This was another point of concern when we spoke with lawyers recently. The only limit in Australia really is is it the, the statute of limitations. So stay tuned for the 1st of August and stay tuned to the Privacy Act review because I think both of those issues are key in how these cases play out. Laurel, thank you so much for keeping us up to date with all of these uh, technical and legal developments. It's uh, a fascinating story. Uh, Let's talk again very soon. Thanks, James. Laurel Henning is an MLEC senior reporter based in Sydney. She covers competition along with data privacy and security. And of course, for the very best of MLEC's reporting and analysis from our correspondents around the world, you can head straight for our website, which is mlexmarketinsight.com. That's M-L-E-X, Market Insight, or one word, dot com, and click on the News Hub tab. That's where we'll leave things for today. Thank you so much to the Legal Talk team for giving us the chance to have a chat about our journalism. Don't hesitate to reach out to us directly with news tips and story ideas. We're always looking for new angles. The podcast was produced and presented by me, James Paniki, and from everyone here at MLEX and LexisNexis, Thank you for your company. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.